Okay, so I have another video lesson for you since I am at the STEM meeting today. This one is going to be on independent versus dependent variables. So the last two days we've talked about functions and relations. So we're basically just talking about ordered pairs. And in each ordered pair, one of the numbers is the independent and one is the dependent. And it just so happens that they always follow the same pattern. All right, so independent. Independent means it stands alone. That's probably what you think about with independent. But some other names for independent is the domain. Um, it's also the input. And it's also the x value. And we always start with the x value. So if you think about ordered pairs, the x value always comes first. That's because the independent one comes first. Then, if you think about what dependent means, something that is dependent depends on something else. So that is our range, or the output depends on the input, and the y value depends on the x value. So whenever you want to decide or determine if something is independent or dependent, you just need to ask yourself, and I would put this in sentence form even, okay, if you fill in the sentence blank depends on blank, that will always get you in the right spot. Now, what this means is that whatever we fill in here is the dependent because the dependent will always depend on the independent. All right, so let's give you a few examples. So let's say that you wanted to compare um, let's say your average in math and your, um, test grades. So, you might be asked to identify which one is the dependent and which one is the independent. Well, what we want to do is fill in this sentence and see which one makes sense. Does your average in math class depend on test grades? Or do your test grades depend on your average in math class? So I think you'll agree that your average depends on your test grades. So since your average depends on your test grades, then this one is the dependent and this one is the independent. All right, so bottom line is if you can make this sentence, you should be able to figure it out. And then sometimes you'll actually have some numbers to fill in. So let's try another one. Let's say that, um, let's say you're gonna go out and buy some jeans. And let's say you're gonna buy $50 jeans and you want to know what is your total cost. Your total cost. All right, so first of all, we have to figure out what's dependent and what's independent. So what is going to depend on what? So if we were to fill this in, I would say that your total cost is going to depend on how many pairs of jeans you buy. How many jeans you buy. So your total cost is going to be the dependent. And then the jeans or the number of jeans would be your independent. 
Now, we could even go further and write this as an equation because we know that your cost is going to equal $50 for every pair of jeans that you buy. So cost equals $50 times the number of jeans. So we could even go over here and fill this in. Remember that the number of jeans you buy, that's your independent. So we're going to start with that. And then your cost is the dependent. So if we buy one pair of jeans, your cost is $50. If we buy two pairs of jeans, then your cost would be $100. If we bought four pairs of jeans, your cost would be $200. So your cost depends on how many jeans you buy. So the cost is the dependent and the number of jeans is the independent. And we could, because we were given numerical information, we could make an equation and then even make a chart. And then we know that this one is a function because if each pair of jeans costs $50, then each input is only going to be used once. All right, I think that covers independent and dependent. If you need to watch the video again or if I went too quickly and you need to go back and pause something so you can take notes, please do. And when you're done with your notes, then you can go pick up your assignment and make sure that you don't turn anything in. Keep everything for tomorrow.